our next video is going to be going over unit nine. This is section 12.3 in your textbook. This first question is the dealing with the FRQ from unit nine. This is just question number one, and that's going to be on pages seven and eight. And it's not one through eight, it's just question number one. So there's only one free response question we're going to work with for slope, and it's going to kind of cover the basics on it. Let's begin. Here's the whole question. It's going to be broken up into five parts. We'll do one at a time. Growth hormones are often used to increase the weight gain of chickens. In an experiment using 15 chickens, three chickens were randomly assigned to each of the five different doses of growth hormone. We have 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.8, and 1.0 milligrams. The subsequent weight gain in ounces was recorded for each chicken. A researcher plots the data and finds out that a linear relationship appeals to hold. Computer output from the least squares regression analysis for these data is shown below. Assume that the conditions performing for performing inference about the slope B of the true regression line are met. So we got a bunch of numbers in a table, and we're going to be asked a series of questions. A, what is the equation of the least squares regression line? Define the variables. B, interpret the slope in context. C, for the, do the data provide convincing evidence of a linear relationship between dose and weight gain? carry out a significance test at the 5% level. D, construct and interpret a 95% confidence interval for the slope parameter. And E, explain how the confidence interval in part D supports the conclusion of the hypothesis test in part C. Well, let's look at one part at a time. Part A, what is the equation of the least squares regression line for these data? You have your generic formula, y hat equals a plus bx. You have to fi figure out what your a and your b are from your table. And a will always be the number, the first number under coefficient that's by the constant. b is going to be the slope that's going to be by the dose. So we're going to write those in. So there you go. You can also write the name of the things that y and x represent. In this case here, there's a little bit more words here. So I'm going to just define the variables to the right. In this case, X is going to be your growth hormone dose in milligrams, and Y hat is predicted weight gain in ounces. So you should be good to go on that one. Let's look at Part B. Part B is asking for you to interpret the slope in context. We have a template for interpreting slope for each increase in one unit of X. Predicted Y increases or decreases by whatever the slope value is. So we're just going to throw some context in there and put the correct unit and the number in there. And so I wrote for each one milligram increase in growth hormone dose, predicted weight gain increases by 4.83 doses. So that would be an appropriate response for that using context and the correct numbers and units. Next question, part C. Part C, did the data provide convincing evidence of a linear relationship between dose and weight gain? Carry out a significance test at the alpha equals 0 0.05 level. Well, we're going to have a few steps to go through this. we got our state plan to conclude. So let's, uh, let's start with the state thing. If we're going to carry out a significance test, we're going to do a linear regression t-test. So name the test, but then state your hypotheses. It's always going to involve the slope being zero or not equal to zero or greater than or less than, depending on the wording of the question. So the question here, very carefully, it says, is there evidence of a linear relationship? It doesn't specify positive or negative, just says linear relationship. So you know that we're looking for a two-sided test. Your hypotheses are going to look like this. You'd say the null hypothesis is there is no linear relationship. In other words, the population slope is zero. The alternative would be there is there is a linear relationship. In other words, the population slope is not equal to zero. In other words, there's some um, slope that is there's evidence that there's not that there is a linear relationship between them. Um, we're going to use an alpha level of five percent. It says so right in the problem, so it's not super necessary to repeat that if you don't want to. So let's go ahead and check our conditions. My favorite line, assume that the conditions for performing inference about the slope B of the true regression line are met. Well, guess what? For our plan part, all we got to do is restate that. Our third step is just to list the p-value, the test statistic, and the degree of freedom. And we have two of those things. So it's right on your problem here. Your t-value, your t-test statistic, 
is right there at 4.75. Your p-value of 0 0.0004, no need to divide that by two because we're already doing a two-sided test anyway. Um, and list your degree of freedom is always gonna be n minus two. We have 15 chickens, so it's gonna be 13. Now, remember that you can calculate this using your, uh, your coefficient for the slope and the standard error. So if you divide, if you divide your slope by your your sample slope by your standard error of the slope, you will get 4.75. If you throw that 4.754 into your TCDF, it's positive. So put the 4.754 in your lower, make your upper positive infinity, and throw your degree of freedom in there at 13, you will get your p-value for a one-sided test. So it's about 1.8835. But since this is a two-sided test, we would multiply that by two. And now we're back up to 0 0.000376, which you could round to 0 0.0004. That's not necessary for that work here because it's already provided for you. So let's go through our and make our conclusion. All right, the big takeaway here, of course, is our very small p-value being less than our alpha at 5%. So we're gonna reject the null. We do have convincing evidence of a linear relationship between these two things. Let's look at part D. Part D wants you to basically do the same thing with the confidence interval. Now, the confidence interval is not provided to you from your, your computer output like the p-value is. So we actually have to go make sure we can get our tests, our, our t star, and, and know what to plug into the confidence interval formula. All right, just setting up our basics here for a confidence interval. You know it's going to be statistic plus or minus critical value times the standard error. Your generic formula for confidence interval listed there is on your formula sheet, but your statistic is going to be your slope. Your critical value you can get from table B or your calculator, and your standard error is listed on here, SEB, for 1.0164. So let's plug in the things we know. We want to make sure that we name the interval linear regression t interval for slope. Uh, conditions are met as stated in the problem. We have the statistic. We have our standard error. What we don't have is our t star. So use your table to get that. And honestly, if you go to table B, we, we know that it's going to be a degree of freedom of 13 because there are 15 chickens. So if you go to 13 and you match it up, you're going to get that. And it looks like it's going to be 2.160, 2.160. So that should be your T star. And so let's plug that right in for there. All right, so cleaning that up a little bit, plugging in your 2.160, um, getting an interval of about 2.637 to 7.027. Simply do your conclusion. We are 95% confident that the true slope of the population as LSRL of doses and weight gain for chickens uh, lies in the interval from 2.637 to 7.027. So I went through that kind of quickly there. Um, let's do our last part here, and then we'll move on to the multiple choice in a different video. 
Part E simply says, explain how the confidence interval in part D supports the conclusion of the hypothesis test in part C. So look at our interval from part D, 2.6 to 7.02, and look at our rejection for part C, and notice that we rejected because we had a very small p-value. In other words, we said we had convincing evidence of a linear relationship. Well, what we're going to say is that since our, since our confidence interval does not contain zero, we have evidence that there is some sort of a linear relationship. If it contains zero, then we would not have evidence because zero indicates that there is no linear relationship. So zeros is not contained in the, in the interval. We have convincing evidence of a linear relationship between these two variables. Uh, specifically, we have convincing evidence of a positive linear relationship, but they didn't really ask us to get into the direction. So I'll just say we have convincing evidence of a linear relationship between these two variables. That is the end of this video. The next video and final video, we'll go over the multiple choice questions for these problems. Thank you.